Welcome! Now let's learn about our second tri uh, triangle congruence postulate. Side angle side, or SAS triangle congruence postulate. This is our second triangle congruence shortcut. So if two sides and the included angle of one triangle are congruent to two sides and the included angle of the second triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. So here we have an example. So if side AB is congruent to side FE, those are the two sides that have one congruence mark, and side AC is congruent to side FD, they have two congruence marks, and the angle between them, angle A is congruent to angle F, then our triangles are congruent. Notice that the two sides, AB and AC, for triangle ABC, meet at angle A. Notice that A repeats. Right? So that's where those two sides meet. If that angle is fixed, right, then there's only one way we can draw the triangle. The same thing for triangle FED. Right? So notice that uh, FE and FD, those two sides, they meet at angle F. Once those two sides and the angle are fixed, there's only one way that we could draw the triangle. Right? So if we have, in this example, if side AB is congruent to side FE, and angle A is congruent to angle F, and side AC is congruent to side FD, well then the only thing that can happen is triangle ABC is going to have to be congruent to triangle FED. So if two sides of two triangles and the included angle are congruent, then the triangles must be congruent. There's only one way to construct the triangle once two sides and the included angle are fixed. But very, very important, let's put an asterisk here, and, and I believe this is in your notes, Put an asterisk in your notes, too. The angle must be between the two congruent sides, or you cannot prove the triangles are congruent. So if that angle is anywhere else, right, it's not going to prove the triangles are congruent. Uh, in the triangle exploration, anytime you put the, if you chose the angle between the two sides, you always ended up with the same triangle. If you put that angle anywhere else, right, then you didn't always end up with the same triangle, right? You can make two different triangles. That's why our angles always got to be between the two sides. That's the only way we can guarantee congruence. So we're going to be working with side angle side in this podcast, and we'll work a little bit on the coordinate plane and off the coordinate plane. So there's only one way to construct the triangle once two sides and the included angle are fixed. So I'm not doing this one as a construction. Um, this is a little harder for me to do with a, just a compass. However, I, we have an example here of side angle side and side side angle. Right? So, notice, so here, the, the angle that's fixed is angle A and angle D. All right? So this angle here is what's fixed. Right? And then the two sides, right? So side AC and side AB. So in our example here, we have a triangle, right? And in the example, uh, two triangles actually, AC is congruent to FD, all right? Or DF, excuse me. All right, so um, AC in one triangle over here. And we'll number them. And uh, DF in the triangle we're constructing over here. Right, so that, that side is fixed. Also fixed is side AB and DE. Right, so we've drawn DE to be the exact same measure as AB, and we've drawn ang the angle D to be the exact same measure as angle A. Well, once I do that, all I can do is move EF until it meets point F. Right? There's just no other way for, F to, for EF to go except to connect E and F, right? because the other two things are fixed. Right? So once we have these two sides and an angle between them fixed, all we can do is just make the same triangle over and over and over again. But there is more than one way to construct the triangle if the angle is not located between the two sides. All right, so here we have side side angle. All right? So this time, I, got, I still have the tri same triangle triangle ABC. The angle that we're using is angle B. So I'm actually going to rewrite this a little nicer. And I'm going to write the information here. All right, so in our example on the bottom here, we have uh, a, B, a, C, congruent to D, F, 
just like before. And we have AB congruent to DE, just like before. But now it's not angle A and angle D. No, now it's angle B and angle E. So notice, I don't have to make the same triangle over and over again, right? Because I can, I mean, I can do the same triangle, right? I could just connect them, but I don't have to. Nobody says that F's got to stay here. What if I want F to go someplace else, right? I could just meet it there, right? I can, sl I can move that side, right? Because that angle's not fixed. So if this angle here's not fixed, this side DF is free to move wherever he wants. And when we do that, we can end up with a triangle that's definitely not congruent, right? So notice that our triangles one and two there are not congruent, right? So in this, in the first example, right here, triangle uh, ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. In the second example, however, triangle ABC is not congruent to triangle, well, it doesn't matter what letters I choose because it's not congruent, but I'll just use triangle DEF. Right? Those two triangles are not congruent, and therefore, side side angle is not a triangle congruence postulate. So if you chose side-side angle when you were doing the exploration, you could get triangles that were not congruent. Right? So side-side angle is not a triangle congruence postulate. Right? Doesn't guarantee a unique triangle. Right? In your notes, I'd like you to write I think it's in your notes somewhere anyway, but uh, if it's not, add that to your notes. All right, so let's continue. Let's learn more about uh, what is a, 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 a triangle congruence postulate, and that is side angle side. We're not going to be working with side side angle because, well, that's just not going to prove our triangle's congruent. And here's our next example coming up. Now, all right, so before we continue on with uh, side angle side, let's review uh, just a couple um, postulates that we learned about in intro to math proofs that might come up in these problems. One is vertical angles, and those are two non-adjacent angles formed by intersecting lines. Vertical angles are congruent. So in our example here, angle one and angle three are, congru are vertical angles and congruent. And angle two and angle four are vertical angles and congruent. So if two angles in a triangle are vertical angles formed by intersecting lines, you can know those angles are congruent. Sometimes we're not going to be, quote unquote, given the information in that they're going to put congruence marks. Sometimes we have to know what's congruent based on knowing relationships in geometry. Right? And so one of them is vertical angles. So every time we see vertical angles, we can know they're congruent. Nobody has to tell us that. So that's one congruence that we might get, that we, may, that we might be able to um, know and not be told. Another one is the reflexive property. So a quantity is congruent to itself. Sometimes figures share a side or an angle. Any side or angle that's shared by two figures is congruent. In other words, the shared piece is congruent to itself. So you're going to see some examples where two triangles are sharing the same angle or side. Right? It's not going to be marked congruent. We have to recognize it's shared by both triangles. It's congruent to itself. Right? And, and know that's true using the reflexive property. All right, so here's our first example. All right, so we want to decide whether the congruence statement is true, and we'll explain our reasoning. All right, so we're going to do a little, a little proof here. Actually, it's not a little proof, it's actual proof. All right, so we're going to have statements and reasons. All right, so some of this I've given you in your notes. Some might not be in your notes. 
you always can add anything that you think might help you, right? Understand the concept or study for tests, or formatives, etc. All right, so the first statement I'm going to make is I'm going to use my diagram because that's going to give me information, right? So we're not going to go right to saying whether or not the triangle is congruent. We're going to make sure we have the three pieces we need. And right now, we only know two triangle congruence postulates. Side, 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 we learned in the previous lesson. Side, angle, side, we learned in this lesson. All right, so the first thing I'm going to state is that JL is congruent to ML. Okay. And how will we know? Actually, I'm going to make, I'm going to say more than one thing in this one step. I'm also going to say that JK, actually, yeah, before I do that, before I say they're congruent, I better say one other thing. Let's make this a, a, a true proof and not like a half a proof. The first thing I better actually say is the true given, which was that JL is equal to 9 and uh, LM is equal to 9. And then I also better say that JK is equal to 8 and MK is equal to 8. So we're not going to leave any steps out at all. We're going to be, we're going to have all the information right from the beginning to end. All right, so how do we know that JL is equal to 9 and LM is equal to 9 and JK is equal to 8 and MK is equal to 8? Of course, that was given. That's the true given. All right, they didn't give, it, give us that those were congruent. They gave us, a, gave us the measurements. All right, but now we could say they're congruent based on the measurements. All right, so we really shouldn't skip any steps. Let's have all of our steps in there. So now that we've said they're the same measurement, now I can also say that JL is congruent to LM. Oops, we've got too many L's in there. And I can also say that JK, I'm going to do this in one step, JK is congruent to MK. Really, I could have done one and two as one step as well. All right, and how do we know that those are congruent? Well, let's think about the definition of congruence, right? Congruent figures, or let's say segments, because it's really a segment. Congruent segments have the same measure. Can I get the rest of that word in there? Pretty much. There we go. You could probably write these two letters a little bit nicer. Now, there's one other thing that we can say, because we don't have enough information yet to prove our triangles are congruent, but there is one other thing that we know, or hopefully that we know. Hopefully, we recognize that both triangles are sharing this side LK here. Right? So we already recognized these two were the same measure, so they were congruent, and that these two are the same measure, so they were congruent. But notice both triangles share um, that same side, LK. LK, so we can also say that LK is congruent to LK. The reason we know that that shared side is congruent is the reflexive property. So now we have enough pieces of information to say that triangle JKL is congruent to triangle MKL. And our reasoning is side, 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 triangle congruence postulate. We've got three sides of one triangle congruent to three sides of the other triangle. That's side, 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 triangle congruence postulate. All right, so now let's try the next one. All right, so the first one, I really did have to say what the measurements were, and then I could say they were congruent. Here we have congruence marks. We want to prove that triangle RST is congruent to triangle WTV. All right, um, by the way, this here, that is not a vertical angle uh, because it's not formed by two lines. It's formed by three intersecting lines, so that's not a vertical line or a vertical angle. All right, so let's try this proof here. And of course, we'll start with our givens. And we're given that ST is congruent to, well, 
I guess it goes with VT. It's hard to tell which way it's supposed to go, VT or TV. But we'll just write the segment. And that was a given. We're also given that RT is congruent to WV. Also given. And notice, we're also given one more thing. Why are we given a lot? Angle R is congruent to angle W. Well, we've got three pieces of information. Does that mean our triangles are congruent? Well, I don't know any other angles are congruent, right? Because these ones here weren't vertical angles, right? So I don't have, I only have one angle. And notice where that angle is located. That angle is not located between the two sides, right? It's not located there at all, right? So if we don't know that this angle is congruent to, oops, to this angle, and we don't know those two angles are congruent, we don't know these triangles are congruent. Because what we have here is side, side, angle, right? And side, side, angle is not a triangle congruence postulate. So can we, pr are, is that congruence statement true? Nope. We don't know that at all, right? So let's just actually, let's move this right here because we're done with this proof. This is a non-proof. So side, side, angle is not a triangle congruence postulate. We're done. Can't prove those triangles congruent. I mean, maybe they are, right? But not from the information we're given. Nope, can't prove that at all. So sometimes the information you're given, you will not be proving the triangles congruent. But if I ask you to write a proof, I wouldn't do that. It's fine on this example that we're doing in class. All right, so included angle, remember the angle made by the two lines with a common vertex. So here we have angle A, and angle A is the included angle between AB and AC. All right, so we have to make sure we have included angles right, when we are dealing with side angle side. By the way, later on we'll talk about included sides, and that's just a side between two angles. All right, so in this example here, in triangle CDE, CE is the included side between angle C and angle E. So we will be using included sides in a later lesson. Let's continue on with side angle side. And I was waiting for the page to turn. It's thinking about it. Here we go. All right, so this one is in your notes. Right, but it's on its own page because it took up a little bit more space and it messed up my laying, my layout there. Um, if, I, if I put this where it belonged, it kind of messed up everything else. So I put it on its own page. We want to prove triangle ABC is congruent to triangle FGH using a triangle congruence postulate. And then we want to prove using a sequence of rigid transformations. Now, so I notice my time here is at 18 minutes. I think I'm going to stop this podcast and then I'm going to pick up with this problem, right? I try not to have my podcast be 30 minutes, and I don't know if, I'll, if it'll take me, it may take me close to 12 minutes. Maybe not, but all the same, I'm going to stop the podcast, right? So I will see you in the next podcast where we will prove these triangles congruent, right? Bye for now.